tip top okay this video is about linkage so so far if you're sort of watching the videos in order which of course you may not be um we've looked at what happens and how alleles are sort and chromosomes are sort independently now Mendel was really lucky because none of the characteristics that he looked at were actually on the same chromosome but linkage is where we have two different alleles for two characteristics but they are on the same chromosome I'm just going to put my as so I've got my homologous pair here so it'd be like we've got an allele for, well it looks like an allele for snail um, again, you know, same characteristic at the same position on its opposite pair and um, look at the two stickers that are same now oh yeah, and an allele for uh, football that's a good example and an allele for football but on the same chromosome now obviously these can't then assort independently because remember meiosis the purpose of meiosis is to split the homologs apart and into two separate cells so this allele is always going to travel with this allele this allele is always going to travel with this allele into the gamete and that's going to affect the ratio that you get at the end so let me just give you um, my pen out again I'm much better with a pen than with pipe cleaners so um, in our cell then we're talking about having and I'm just going to draw my chromosomes as a line allele big A and allele big B on the same chromosome allele little a allele little b on the same chromosome the loci are opposite each other so this genotype of this organism is a heterozygote and normally you would foil those uh, to get the gametes out and if you were crossing two heterozygotes together, you'd get the 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio. And if you cross it with a homozygous recessive individual, you get the 1 to 1 to 1 to 1 ratio. But because of the way that these are segregating, so they're not segregating independently, they are segregating together into the uh, two cells, we only get two gamete types. So we get the gamete type that has both of the dominant alleles in and we get the gamete type that has the recessive alleles in. So this time now, if we're crossing two individuals, but each one is now only producing two gamete types, when we put it into our Punnett square, we're not going to get that 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio. And we've only got four Punnett boxes for a set of. So parent 1, parent 2, big A, big A, big B, big B, big A, little A, big B, little B, big A, little A, big B, little B, little A, little A, little B, little B. So we can see now that this has got dominant alleles for both characteristics. So this is um, dominant for both, and we've got three of those, to the one that is recessive. For both, and we've got one of those. Now, there, of course, there are ways in which we can get some what we call recombinants. So, recombinants mm. would be the ones that would have the dominant allele for A, perhaps, but the two little B alleles, or the other way around. 
and these would be cores, the cores of recombination is crossing over. So just to remind you of what crossing over is, it would be when the <coughs> DNA breaks, there's a point in between those two aliens, it doesn't matter if it happens somewhere else, it only matters if it um, happens between them, which would give us then our big A allele now attached to our little B allele and our little A attached to the big B. What you'll really notice though in crosses is that this is uh, infrequent, so uh, it's a relatively rare event. If the alleles are far apart, it'll happen more frequently, you'll get more recombinants. If they're really, you know, they're adjacent genes, you're really unlikely to get crossing over. So crossing over, big cause of recombination. So what you'll tend to find, how will you spot this in an exam? So what to look for is that you are getting uh, not a 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio and you are getting a 3 to 1 ratio of the dominant to, to recessive like that plus almost equal small numbers of these recombinants. So for example, if you were looking at uh, our guinea pig example, if those two genes for smooth hair and uh, so the, the hair shape, you know, smooth or rough, plus the black and brown were linked together, you get a lot of uh, black rough haired guinea pigs and a lot of albino smooth haired guinea pigs, one set of those, so a quarter mm. of them. But then you get really tiny numbers of black smooth-haired and albino rough-haired guinea pigs. So the thing to look for is that you're not getting this ratio. Now obviously if you put this into chi-squared and you've got uh, small numbers of recombinants, say you know five of those, uh, 150 of these, 40 odd of these, and you put them into some kind of statistical test, it will say, actually, no, that difference between the 93 to 3 to 1 ratio and what you've actually got are going to be really different. Um, Chi-squared is coming to a video near you very soon.